Bible, share with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll begin reading at verse 1 and we'll read through verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. It's good to see Jennifer here today. Amen. 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 All the way from the great city of Charlotte, North Carolina. Right. Amen. Eight hours, 500 miles. Amen. Uh, reading from the New American Standard Version. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer ought to be the first to receive his share of the crops. Consider what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, descendant of David, according to my gospel, for which I suffer hardship even to imprisonment as a criminal. But the word of God is not imprisoned. For this reason I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they may also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus, and with it eternal glory. Eternal glory. Verse 9 in the NIV tells us that the Word of God is not in chains. In our New American Standard, the Word of God is not in prison. For the next few moments, friends, I will share with you from the subject, when I discover who I am, I'll be free. When I discover who I am, I will be free. I cannot take credit. For the title of today's sermon, I cannot take credit. But those are words that are found by Ralph Ellison as he wrote the great, the great wonder novel of The Invisible Man. For yes, he talked about what it was to be uh, of a certain hue in this country and what it felt like to be invisible. And he challenged us in that time to say that when I discover exactly who I am, then I will be free. He spoke of this understanding of freedom. Roger Williams, the great founder of the state of Rhode Island in 1636 and the father of all those who identify themselves as Baptists in these United States, he said it this way, as faith is the free gift of the Holy Spirit, it cannot be forced upon a person. It is talking about the ethic, the understanding, the reality of being free. For freedom is the ability to choose for oneself. Yes. Freedom, the ability to dominate, the ability to direct, the ability to dictate one's own agency of self. Freedom that men and women proudly and fiercely died for. The spirit of someone like Nat Turner that you see even now in the movie theaters. The movie theaters that said a birth of a nation. You found a man who was a, a preacher who recognized and understood that there is something divine about the understanding of freedom. It is the understanding of the voice of Amistad. Oh, you saw the movie. Some of you remember it well when they stood up in the courtroom and said, give us us free. But there is something wrong when people are finding themselves under the heel of the master, whatever the master is. Whoever the master is, I shared with some of my colleagues the other day, whenever the reading of the text ends up with you having your heel on the back of someone else's neck, then you are reading the text wrong. Amen. And they looked at me with disdain. They looked at me, who are you to tell us? I believe that the scriptures tell us that God is a God who welcomes, who understands, and who values this understanding of freedom. Yes. Galatians 5.1 says it was for freedom that Christ set you free. Therefore stand firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. It was for freedom 
that men and women found themselves on the battlefield of the Civil War. It was for freedom that Jesus hung and bled and died that you and I might have access to eternal life. It is an understanding that says when I understand exactly who I am, it is at that point then I will be free. There is something divine when the essence of freedom can be felt from breast to breast and from heart to heart, when children can grasp the totality of their future as they bask in the warmth of freedom. Last night, I couldn't sleep. And I found myself watching the television, and all of a sudden on the screen, Sister Elise, it was the movie Pursuit of Happiness. You remember Will Smith, and he was showing himself and recounting the life of Christopher Gardner. And in the midst of the movie, you saw Christopher Gardner go through so many things, so many obstacles, so many letdowns that he sought to be the best father that he could be. Yes. But one thing that stood out to me, that even in the midst of all the obstacles, even in the midst of everything that was against him, he recognized, Sister Estella, that he had the freedom to do as he saw fit. And it might be hard sometimes, yes. but who said that being a freedom fighter is easy? Yes. Oh, wants to go to the rally and put something on Facebook, but I tell you, this fight for freedom is not for the faint at heart. This fight for freedom is not for those who seek to turn it off on Monday. I tell you, we got to keep on marching and keep on fighting and keep on believing that when I understand exactly who I am, then I will be free. That's why I tell my daughters every single day, I say, Daddy loves you. I say, you want to know a secret? And they say, Daddy, what's the secret? And I say, Daddy loves you. Amen. And then they say, well, Daddy, is there anything that I, we could do to make you not love us? I say, never. Because I love you from now and forever. I'm always Daddy. And Daddy's always going to love you. I tell them that you're beautiful. Because I tell you, I want them to understand that they have been made beautifully in the image of God. And that at that moment, they can be free. Free to put away the pressures of an external society that would seek to tell them that everything they are is not what they ought to be. Yes. But when we truly understand to be who they believe they can be, to belong where they determine they belong, there is power, friends, in freedom. In your text this morning, you see that Paul is writing to Timothy again, and Paul being the friend, Paul being the mentor, Paul being the teacher, Paul being the man of God that he is, he writes to Timothy because he wants to encourage Timothy along his path. And some people have been through some things that some of us would be better off if we were able to sit and listen to the words that they share with us. Yes. I tell you from time to time, it's good to have Brother Wilson back in church, but when I went to his house, he would tell me some things, and I would leave, and I would think about what he told me, and as I would drive, I would realize that he told me something that was very true. And I'm not going to give you the insight. you got to go visit him yourself. Amen. <laughs> But I tell you this, some of us are moving so fast and talking so much that no one can ever tell us anything. It's as if we know everything. But some people have been to some places that they've learned some things that you might be better off than you just sat down and listened. Yes. And that is the situation with Paul and Timothy, where you see Paul has been in jail already. Paul has been beaten down in Iconium. Paul has been left for dead in Galatia. Paul has traveled the world sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now, Sister Brittany, as he is getting ready to talk to Timothy, he is going to tell Timothy something that Timothy doesn't even know yet because he hasn't lived long enough to experience. It's kind of like when the old folks say, you just keep on living. And you learn some things. Just keep on going and you learn some things. See, it must be a holiday for Voices of Praise. They had two birthdays, amen? So Sister Lisa had a birthday on yesterday. And Sister Jazz has now entered into teenage erdom. <laughs> but see, there's some things that Sister Lisa has learned from 13 to now. That Jazz is just getting the taste of now that she just turned 13. Can I make it plain to you? <laughs> This is understanding that Paul is now going to share with him that, Timothy, I want you to know fully who you have been called to be. The first thing he says is be strong. 
Look to your neighbor and say, be strong. Be strong. You don't even know that someone that you just said that to probably really needed to hear that today, or they might have been contemplating leaving the battlefield for whatever they've been battling right now. They could have been leaving a job. They could have been leaving a husband or wife. They could have been getting down about a medical condition. But you just told them, buddy, that they ought to be strong. Yeah. If something else, when you know that there's someone else who believes in you, that you can do more than you thought you could ever do. And it wasn't just the pastor. It was, it was our brothers and sisters who said, be strong. Be strong in what you are doing. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Because the first thing I want you to know today is there will always be those who seek to limit or take your freedom. They don't like the fact that you're free. And I'm not just talking about free as far as we understand the antebellum South and just, I'm not talking about that. They don't like your freedom of choice and agency. Your ability to choose. Amen. They don't like the fact that you like to watch Star Trek. They say you need to watch Real Wives of Atlanta. They don't like the fact that you like to play board games. They say you want to be out at the club right now. Ladies night is free. They don't like the fact that you like to do certain things. They don't like the fact that you are exercising your freedom. Amen. Amen. And they will always try to limit it and take it from you. In Paul's situation, they put him in jail because they wanted to limit his freedom. They wanted to take it from him and more importantly, Brother Will, they wanted to break his spirit so that he became used to being in chains. That he became, the chains became a comfort to him. But see, Paul is telling Timothy that, Timothy, I've been in jail. But one thing I want you to know, that even though I am in jail, I am not of jail because I have been made free. Why do you think Dr. King can write you a letter from Birmingham jail while he's in jail telling you to stay out of jail because God is still with us? See, they want all in the prison industrial complex. They want them to think that that is who they are. No, that's not who they are. That is where they temporarily reside. All right. Amen. Oh, yeah, they try to take your, they try to take your freedom in your mind. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I wasn't going to say it. It's all my paper, Sister Jenny, but this is the best example I can see. They try to put your mind out of control, and you remember, some of y'all might remember, in bold, free your mind. Yes. And the rest will follow you. It's his understanding that says we have been made to be free. So when they come to take it from you, when they try to put a burden on you, you shake it off. You don't let it in. You remember who God has made you to be. Let's look at the text. Go down to verse 8. Here, remember Jesus Christ. Risen from the dead, descendant of David, according to my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to imprisonment as a criminal. But the word of God is not in prison. It's not in chains. So it tells me the word of God is free. Oh, say it with me. The word of God, word of God is free. Is free. The, the word of God, word of God is, free. is free. There are some folks trying to keep the word of God in chains. And you know how they do it? They say, well, you got to do this for God to love you. You got to do this for God to bless you. You got to do this for God to forgive you. But Paul tells Timothy, you remain strong in the Lord. You recognize who God has made you to be. And you remember that the word of God is not in chains, but it is free for all who will believe. Free to do what? I don't know if there are one or two witnesses here today that the word of God is free to set you free. I don't know if there's anyone here today that can say the word of God, the gospel is there, it is free to deliver your situation. I don't know if there's anyone here that understands that the word of God can be sent and is free to heal your body. The word is free. Oh, you remember what John 8.32 said? It said, the truth shall sets you free. You remember this understanding that lets us know that the gospel is not in chains. Yes. Yes. So what do we do now? What do we do now that we understand that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not in chains? 
yet it has been given to us yes. freely yes. that we might share freely yes. with others. Yes. First, mm -hmm. we must freely share the gift of God. Amen. Amen. Make a note of it. Amen. We must freely share yes. the gift of God. Mm -hmm. See, uh, my brothers and sisters, People have been talking about freedom a long time. Hey, yeah. <clears throat> Even from the beginning of time, since the fall in Eden, people have been wanting to be <laughs> free. And oftentimes, they continue to be uh, enslaved, even in their own minds. Mm -hmm. But they want to be free. And it's, it's coast to coast. It's not just the United States. It's the world. You remember Bob Marley, don't you? Yes. Oh, y'all know Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pirate ships, hey, Rabbi. <laughs> Sold I to the merchant ships. Minutes after they took I from the bottomless pit. But my head was made strong oh, yes. by the hand of the Almighty. He followed in this generation triumphantly. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? It's all I ever had. Redemption songs. Y'all want to go sing? Y'all know second verse. Emancipate yourselves from anti-slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. Have no fear for atomic energy, because none of them can stop the time. How long shall they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? Ooh. <laughs> We've got to fulfill the book. Yes. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? It's all I ever had. Redemption songs. Yes. See, it's from coast to coast, all across the world. Yes. People want to be free. Yes. And now we understand that God has made us free and given us the call to say we must share this freedom with others. Freely share the gift of God. Yes. Freely share the gospel. Yes. Two, make sure that you freely allow yourself to realize and see yourself in the gospel. Mm -hmm. Find yourself in the gospel story. One of the greatest issues of time, and even in churches, is that people have a hard time finding themselves in the gospel story. Yes. See, it's easy to tell someone else that God has forgiven your sins. Mm -hmm than it is for us to tell ourselves that God has forgiven my sins. It's easier to tell someone else that God will make a way for you than it is for us to say that God will make a way for me. We must find ourselves in the gospel story, for the gospel has been made free. And it's free to change us. Change us into what? Change us into disciples. Change us into the image of God that God has called us to be. And that is why now we must realize who we are. And when we realize who we are, then we will be free. When we realize that we are not just the skin on our body, then we will be free. When we realize that we are not just the hair on our head, it is then we will be free. When we realize that we are not just the jobs we work, then we will be free. When we realize that we are not just the clothes that we wear, then we will be free. When we realize that we are not just the cars we drive, then we will be free. When we realize we are not just the cell phone we have, then we will be free. When we realize that our identity is tied up in the blood of Jesus, it is then we will be free. For he said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I bled that you might not go to hell. Don't lie, you say God has made me free. I don't care, they try to tell you, take a 
and drink right now. God has made me free. Because when we truly know who we've been called to be, it is then we will be free. I'm about to be through verse 10. For this reason, everyone say this reason. This reason. I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen so that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus and with it eternal glory. Everyone say eternal glory. Last but not least, and I'm going to take my seat, friends. You recognize that freedom is not a selfish endeavor. Oh, hallelujah, you missed it. You missed it. Freedom is not a selfish endeavor. See, if some folks walking around saying, I'm free, I hope you get free one day. <laughs> they say it's working out for me. I hope it works out for you one day. Uh, God's been blessing me. I hope he blesses you one day. Paul lets you see that this is why I do what I do. The reason I deal with being in jail, the reason I deal with folks talking about me, the reason why I deal with all the people turning their back is not just for me, Pastor. It's not just for me, ministers. It's not just for me, Jesus. But it is for all of us together. And we come together. the way God wants us to walk and realize that we're not leaving anybody behind but we're taking everybody with us. And after we walk down the street and we see the woman selling her body, we remind her that God has made you free. And we see the young man selling the dope on the corner, we remind them that God has made you free. We go to the hospital and we see a person crying, we say, God has made you free. I don't do it just for me. I tell you, I can preach myself happy anytime I want. So we come together and we remember that God has made us free. We walk a little straight. We smile a little wide. We say words of encouragement a little bit more. Because when I found out, who I was. Yes. It was at that moment I became free. Yes. When I found out that he placed the preaching gift on the inside, yes. it was that moment I knew I was I was free at that time. Right? When I realized that God was going to use me in a way that I couldn't even understand it myself, it was at that time that I became free. Free to do what? Free to preach the gospel of the shame. Free to say that God still saved. You are free 
to not live the life that you've been living anymore. Yes. Yes. You are free yes. to leave some things behind and push yes. forward with God. Yes. You are free to not go to hell but to make your way up to heaven. Yes. Minister and Louise, they said, just over in the glory land. Yes. And we're going to draw a heaven's angel band. Yes. Just over in the glory land. I want to make sure that you're with me in the glory land. Yes. Thank you. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every week I tell myself, y'all, I say this is the day that we're going to come to the house of God. And I, I say to myself, I say, well, just, just keep your coat on and don't yell at the folks too much. That's all right. That's all right. I wish you could see that I ride and I talk to myself. I say, it's all right. You should just keep control of yourself. Right. But see, when you've been bound, All right. and then God makes you free. Yes. Yes. Calls us to cry out. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Because yes. it wasn't my mother, it wasn't my father, but at one point, it was me. Yeah. And Ali, I was standing in the knee of prayer. They called him to learn with Herman. Yes. The same way he hears each and every one of us. Yes. And he said, my word is not in change. Yes. But I'll send it to you. And it'll bless you. I'll send it to you. And it'll heal you. I'll send it to you, you know, build you up. Yes, yes. Thank you. If you don't know Jesus, I invite you to come. If you want to be a member of a good church, I invite you to come. If you want someone to pray with you, I invite you to come. The choir will sing. If the Spirit is speaking to you, come on. We're not going to wait long. Because I know that if the Spirit is speaking, there's power speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Cry, come on.